North Carolina has elected two new members of Congress, the result of two special elections to fill seats in the U.S. House, one in the 3rd District in eastern North Carolina, and then one in the 9th District, stretching from Mecklenburg County East all the way over to Cumberland and Bladen Counties. Voters have now chosen Republicans to fill both of those seats, dashing Democratic hopes to turn them blue. So is there anything we can learn about the 2020 elections from these two races. Carolina Journal has been covering both of them quite extensively. Editor-in-Chief Rick Henderson joins us now. Rick, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Donna. The big one, the 9th Congressional District, that's the one that the results weren't certified in 2018 due to ballot shenanigans. So we have the new race. National Democrats, National Republicans put tons of money into this thing. And yet the Republican Dan Bishop has won that race, uh, dashing the Democrats' hopes. That's right. He won by the we don't have all the official totals at the time we're recording this, but by about two percentage points, it looks like, over uh, Democrat Dan McCready. Dan Bishop is an attorney, state senator, uh, was a member of the state house before he uh, became a state senator, and is someone who ran very much as a proxy for President Trump, as someone who would carry forward President Trump's agenda, someone who was, uh, who was a very strong cultural conservative. He had a lot to do with the House Bill 2 legislation. And so he staked out a very, very solid and pretty, uh, you know, pretty, uh, you know, uh, impermeable, if you will, ideological position. He was, he, he was a known quantity. Dan McCready was someone who was a little bit less known ideologically, but I think well known in the district because he was the person who lost in 2018 to Mark Harris in the original race that was then vacated, if you will, by the State Board of Elections. He's essentially been running for this district nonstop for 27 months. He had very, very high name recognition in the district, Um, and he's someone who also had a very strong financial and grassroots support on his side. And so he's someone who, if any Democrat could win this district, which, by the way, has been held by Republicans consecutively since 1963, if anybody could win this one, Dan McCready probably was the guy who could do it. Marine veteran, entrepreneur, uh, involved in the renewable energy business, touted his strong faith roots and ran very moderately also did not for instance in the initial race against uh, the reverend mark harris he was asked numerous times who he would vote for for speaker of the house if uh if he had the opportunity the democrats won he he said i won't vote for nancy pelosi and the question came up again, again and again. Well, who would you vote for? He said, "Well, it won't be Nancy Pelosi." So he, <laughs> he was he was playing this 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 role of the moderate, and it was something that uh, that I think the Democrat would probably have to have to be competitive in that district. But nonetheless, second time around, uh, he still was not able to to get past the post there. Trying to analyze this going forward, Rick. Um There are some folks who say this should be a big red flag for the Republicans because, as you mentioned, this is a Republican district, and Dan Bishop won it, uh, we think, by two points, perhaps just a little bit more than that, when some are saying, hey, he should have uh, really run run away with that race, and he didn't, but uh, a solid win. On the other hand, other people are saying, hey, this just shows that the Democratic Party running a more centrist, a more moderate uh, candidate can't win because they've been taken over by much more radical leftists. Where do you land on this? That's, I mean, it's a great question. It's something that we may really not know until 2020, basically, because it appears that whoever wins the Democratic nomination for president is going to be somebody who is going to be from the left side of that party's uh, perspective. And so that's going to be, it's not going to be someone who's going to be a moderate or centrist. I mean, it looks very likely that it's not going to be Joe Biden, who is running uh, ahead in a lot of these polls currently, still is someone who's not a moderate by any stretch of the imagination. If you look at his voting record, if you look at his statements over the years, he's considered to be a moderate among Democrats, but he's not a moderate uh, among, say, general political ideological maps. So the Democratic Party is going to nominate someone far to the left of President of President Trump, who's the almost certain Republic, Republican nominee for president, but that doesn't mean that inter and intra district, uh, uh, you know, dimensions politically will make uh, a difference in a, in a specific race. 
not all Democratic districts are governed by people who are as far left as, let's say, Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. Not all Republican districts are governed or are, are, are represented by someone uh, as as much of, say, a nationalist as Donald Trump is. So, I mean, there, there, there are dynamics that are local. And the question for Democrats in places like the Ninth, where they think they have a chance, is can someone who runs independently of the party apparatus succeed, or is that message just lost because everybody's paying attention to what the cable news shows say, and they just simply are, are, have, have made, made these, these uh, candidates essentially two-dimensional figures? You mentioned Trump. What about his impact? He made the stop in Cumberland County in Fayetteville the day before the election. Mm-hmm. The vice president, Mike Pence, was also campaigning rigorously for mm-hmm. Dan Bishop. Are they the folks that uh, are responsible for his win? I think they certainly helped push him over the finish line. I think that uh, that the presence there of the president and the vice president. The vice president was making phone calls. He was he was at the phone banks. He was actually uh, t- you know talking to voters, trying to get them out to vote. Uh, I think it did help. And also uh, the the winner of the ninth of the third district, who we'll be talking about in a few minutes, Greg Murphy, appeared there as well, which was not expected. Uh, and so. That was something that I think did make a difference. Uh, it did reassure voters who were inclined to vote for Senator Bishop to vote for him. And Because the thing about it was, Dan Bishop only jumped into this race when it became possible in February. And he has been involved with the General Assembly throughout this year. The General Assembly is still in session right now. And so he's not been able to campaign as actively as someone who, let's say, was not currently serving in public office or somebody who was in the House. So Dan Bishop will take that seat um, in the 9th Congressional District. So he will be sworn in. You mentioned the 3rd District. Greg Murphy, the Republican there, easily wins Mm -hmm. that race. That was for the seat that um, the late Walter Jones had held for many, many years. That's why that special election was occurring. Uh, Greg Murphy goes to Congress. Yes, uh, at least a 25-point win, it looks like, uh, right now. Uh, And Greg Murphy uh, was expected to win. He ran against Alan Thomas, the former mayor of Greenville. Um, the the situation with Murphy, as much as anything else, was that it was if the race was close, that would have been something Democrats should, should, could have gotten some cheer from. Didn't uh, it? Didn't happen. Uh, Greg Murphy is a physician. Uh, he is uh, a urologist. He's on the board of the medical school at East Carolina University. He's going to be very involved in health care issues. And so this is somebody else, I think, as sort of with Tom Tillis when he came to Washington to provide some ideas about state-level reforms. Greg Murphy may be able to help uh, Repu- the Republicans in Washington with some more state-level, local, federalist medic- uh, you know, medical policies. And now they're both going to have to presumably run again very soon. <laughs> That's right. Don't shut down the campaign apparatus. That's Volunteers right. will keep their jobs or keep their positions. So there you go. Because 2020 is only a few months away That's on right. the calendar.